Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1370. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook, Excel Magic Trick 1370 to 1371, so you can follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we got a question here that asks, hey, here's our list of items, and we want a formula to extract the first item and then skip over three columns, extract the second item, skip over three columns, extract the third item, and so on. Now, I'm not sure why the person wanted to do this, but this formula is not exactly straightforward. So here's our list. Now, really what I would like to do is just do this. Equal sign, click on the first one, tab, tab, tab. Equal sign, click on the next one, tab, tab, tab. Equal sign, click on the next one, and so on. But that's not what this person wanted. They wanted a formula to automatically do this. Now, the first thing is, is we're going to have a lookup formula that looks up the items, and we'll use index and tell index, look up the first one. But then we're going to need our formula to be copied over. And then when it gets here, it's going to need to know to look at the second one. So to start off, we're going to need a formula element that generates this pattern of numbers. Now, anytime you're doing sequential numbers and you're going to copy across the columns, we're going to use the columns function. If we were copying down across the rows, we would use the rows function. So we're going across columns. So I'm going to use columns function. Now, columns need some sort of array. Now, I'm sitting in cell A8, so I'm going to type dollar sign A8 colon A8, close parentheses. Now, this is an expandable range as we copy across the columns because the first part of the range A8 to A8 is locked. That means it's locked on column A. But the second part is not. So when I copy this to the side, that A8 will move to B8, C8, D8, and so on. Columns will count how many columns there are in the range. Now notice A8 to A8, how many columns? One. Control Enter. Copy it to the side. Go to any particular cell. F2. Notice the range has expanded now A8 to C8. So of course, columns reports three columns. When we get to this fourth column, F2, A8 to D8 reports four. Now we really need 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2. So I'm going to go to the first cell, F2 to put it in edit mode. And I'm going to divide this by 3. Now I'm going to type the 3 in just for a moment. Control Enter, copy it to the side. Notice that sort of looks like what we want. All of these numbers are 1 or less. All of these numbers are 2 or less. So we can amend the formula further by rounding each number up to the nearest integer. So in the first cell, F2, I'm using the round up function. Now round up, there's our number, comma. Now round up, round down, and round all need a number of digits to round to. We always want to round to the nearest integer. So I'm going to use 0. So it's always going to round up to the nearest integer. Close parentheses, Control Enter, and copy this to the side. There we go. There's our patterns of 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2. Now I actually want to come up here and follow Excel's golden rule. I'm going to type a label, number of columns, tab, and I'm going to put a 3. This is our formula input for our formula. That way, it's in the spreadsheet. We're going to come over here. And instead of using the 3, I'm going to highlight that. Click on that cell. F4 to lock it, because I need it locked everywhere. Control Enter, and copy this to the side. Now, the beauty of that, of course, is now I come up here, and if I type a 5, now we get our patterns of 1s and then our patterns of 2s in increments of 5. I'm going to Control Z, so we have our 3. I'm going to format this. Now, that's our formula element that we need to use up here in our lookup formula inside of the index function. Now, notice the A8 is set up, and so is the cell reference here. So I can simply copy the whole cell, Control-V, 
copy it to the side. We get exactly the same thing. But notice we were smart about our cell references, F2, because we only lock the A when I copied it up. Of course, the row reference moved. Now that tells our lookup formula which item in this list to look up. So now I'm going to put the index function, tab, the array. Those are the items to potentially look up. So I'm going to highlight our range, F4 to lock it, and comma. Now index is asking for a row number. We actually have a column number, but index is program when we're only looking up through a one-way array. That row num argument knows to interpret that formula element there as the position in any one-way lookup range. That's all I need is the row number. I come to the end, close parentheses, Control Enter. Now we're going to copy it to the side. And it's almost what we want. We got apple, 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 because of course, 1, 1, 1 for the lookup formula is obeying us. Apple, 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 and then orange, 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 repeated three times. So now we need to shut the formula off for the columns that we don't need to fill. So our next sequential number formula element is going to need to do something like 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0. So we're going to click down here, equals columns, Control-Enter. Copy it to the side. Now, that's not quite what we want. We really need this column and this column. So how are we going to get 1, 4, 7? We're actually going to divide each one of these numbers by 3 and take the remainder. The function to get a remainder after division is called the mod function. There's the number, the numerator. Now I comma, and the divisor or the denominator is 3. I'm going to make sure and lock that with the F4 key. Now remember, mod, when I close parentheses and Control Enter, is going to tell me what the remainder is. So as I drag it to the side, 1 divided by 3, well, of course, the remainder is 1. 4 divided by 3, the remainder is 1. 7 divided by 3, the remainder is 1. So now we have almost what we need. I'm simply then going to ask the question, are you equal to 1? Now, we used a comparative operator, so this formula will deliver a true or false. Control Enter, true. When I copy it to the side, come back. Now we have true, true, true. There's the trigger for when to run the lookup formula. I'm going to copy this in edit mode, Control C. Come up to cell A4, F2. Now we're going to have to, before our lookup formula, we're going to have to put the if function. The logical test, Control V. Now I actually do not want this pointing down towards A11, so I'm going to change the 11 to a 4, the 11 to a 4. Now come right to the end after the 1, and that entire Logical formula delivers a true or false. When it comes out true, what do I want? I already have my lookup formula. I come to the end, comma. The value, if false, is going to be our syntax for show nothing, double quote, double quote. Now, that is a zero length text string. That is the formula element we use to display nothing. Now I can simply close parentheses, Control-Enter, and copy it to the side. And there is our formula. Now that is a pretty long and complicated formula to do what we want. I wish we could have just done this, but there you go. Not only that, but here's another silly one listed if you want to check it out. I like this one much better. Shorter and more to the point. All right, thanks to Tony for this cool question. It's awesome to hang out on our online Excel team. We'll see you next trick.